Greetings, kinsmen, and welcome to Yurt Me Baby One More Time, Ring My Bell. When I set this up at Biko the first time, that center ring looked like a kidney bean. So what I'm going to do is reinforce it with a plywood kind of wheel in the center of it. So I'm trying to get the inside circumference, and I'm going to use that circumference to get a diameter. Now diameter is going to help me make a circle that I need to cut out with a scroll saw. So I don't know what the formula was, or I can't remember. It's just some weird witchcraft thing that I don't want to talk about it. So this is a tabletop scroll saw. The handheld scroll saw blade will flex in or out, and you won't get a straight 90 degree cut. And that's where that tabletop scroll saw really shines. It gives you a nice, clean 90 degree cut. So after some trial and error, the best way to do this is to insert it sideways and then twist it into place. And uh, well, the best way to do it is just hit it with a hammer. Like all problems, with enough velocity and a hammer, anything's possible. So after that initial test fitting, I got to make another one. Now I couldn't get the compass to get a small enough diameter to be the exact diameter of that little top pie piece for my stove. So I'm just rotating it, measuring it from all sides, just rotating a quarter turn and keep measuring it, make sure it's exactly dead on center. And I'm just gonna trace it out. And then I'm gonna make the outside ring with that compass. It's hard to explain, so I'm just gonna let you guys watch and eventually you're going to see what I'm going to build and why I'm making all these marks and all these lines everywhere. Real quick note, I'm using the Builder Square to make sure that you have 90 degree lines for the wheel. I'm adding another outside ring because I'm not sure if that center ring is big enough to support the entire weight of the roof if it has to. So I'm just widening that out and uh, adding a bit more stability to that center wheel ring thingy. That's a technical term. Now, I didn't show you the cutout because I think you guys can figure out how I made that happen. Just a drilling a hole big enough for the scroll saw blade to get in there and I just cut them out. I probably didn't record it because I can't find the footage, but either way, I'm sealing the ends of these with Type Bond 3 waterproof wood glue, and then I'm sealing the face of it with spar urethane because this is going to see a lot of water, a lot of moisture, and I want to make sure that the plywood doesn't expand. Also, the spar urethane it takes about half hour, 45 minutes, and then you're ready to flip it over and do the other side. So pro tip, these food saver bags are really, really nice for sealing up all sorts of like brushes and rollers. If you don't wanna clean them or waste the money on buying a new one, you can get this little vacuum sealer. And I've left these up to like a year and they were just like brand new and fresh uh, right out of the bag so well worth the money also make sure that you write down what's inside the bag so you're not mixing up brushes and rollers and kind of messing up your projects So this isn't the best angle to show you this, but I'm piloting the hole with a, with a 1 8 inch bit, and then I'm just screwing it in. 
I'm going in between each hole and doing it that way to hold that little wheel in place to make sure that the center ring doesn't turn into a kidney bean like last time. So I'm using my little scraper like a little shoehorn and it seemed to work pretty well. So I forgot to seal the inside edges of the wheel. Um, also, take note, if you look at the edges of the plywood there, this is Baltic birch plywood. There's no voids in it, which I think is kind of ideal to keep uh, any kind of water outside of any void or you know hole because it'll start expanding. It's not gonna be good. Well, there's just something satisfying of just Hearing plastic off of things. I don't know why. So I got this piece from Lowe's or just any hardware store at a discount because of that crack. I only paid a few dollars for it. They couldn't resell it. So, And here I am just filling that crack with glue and just moving it around, making sure that it just leaks into that crack. And then when you're done, clean it off, flip it over, do the other side. Clamp it together when you're done. Now don't over clamp it because you're going to squeeze all the glue out of it and it's not going to hold. You want to leave it overnight. And there you go. Nice and sealed up. Good as new. I'm going to cross cut it to length. So I'm going to leave this part as a surprise. Uh, you guys are going to figure out what it is. And if you do know, put it down in the comments down below. And this is... Um, pretty nice little feature to the new frame so I'm getting the right depth to the miter edge once I am satisfied I start going back to the actual project to make sure I don't ruin it you know by cutting too much and then it's just not working for me I have to try and fix it come up with a solution and it takes a lot of time So this is really soft white pine. I don't want to go too far and scratch it up. So I'm going with 120 grit sandpaper. I'm cleaning up that glue spot specifically and making sure that any scratches are taken off of it. I'm cleaning up that edge, making sure it's nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna seal it up with some Danish oil. No, I'm sorry, tongue oil. And by the way, these are dish gloves. I've talked about this before and they're just really useful. They're like a buck and they'll protect your hands from all sorts of chemicals, keep them from getting really nasty and dirty and getting chemicals on your hands, which you could eat with your hands later and that those chemicals will get into your food and into your stomach. So wear proper protective clothing. This is kind of a personal thing but I like three heavy coats on anything that I seal it up with I could have used linseed oil it would have been cheaper and I think it would have been better but I didn't have linseed oil I had some leftover tongue oil so I thought I'd use it make sure your oil is dry before you do this step because um, you don't want to get any kind of um, dirt, specks, dust, whatever in with the oil because it will harden in place, kind of like paint. So that hinge is just right where I want it to be. I'm using the trusty rusty slide ruler to make sure that that whole ring is centered onto that board and measure, remeasure, and make sure that you do it right because sometimes you can't go back and fix it. So 
old adage is so true. Measure twice, cut once. So by now you guys have figured out what it is. It's kind of a little hatch. Um, it keeps the rain from getting in, but it still allows air to ventilate out. So if I want to have a stove in there, I want to make sure that that smoke leaves and gets out of the tent and also keeping the rain out. So I have a little hatch that I can use. And this is the next part of that hatch. And uh, maybe you guys can figure out what I'm doing here. And again, uh, the reason why I'm using that tape, it's a little old trick where you can use that as a marker to make sure you don't drill too far into the wood. I don't want to come out the other side because again, this has got to keep the water out. If I penetrate the other side, well, that's a hole for water to get inside. So not the best angle. I'm not sure why you guys thought would really appreciate the look of my elbow, but hey, I, I don't even know why I cut it with a, a coping saw. I could have done it with a uh, miter saw or something. Oh yeah, using that little scroll saw to cut a little slot at the end of that to fit over that little ring. Don't do as Donnie does. Another pro tip, make sure that all tools are secure in place before operation. So I'm rounding off the edge of this piece for a reason. And I'm gonna show you in another shot here why I'm doing it that way. I'm gonna keep this as a mystery as well, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a clue. I'm using the, the width of the stick I just made as the measurement of what I wanna cut out on the board. And uh, if you guys kind of figure it out or have a guess, put it down in the comments down below.
so some of you have already guessed this is a jig a jig to keep the rod from spinning as I drill it and to making sure that all the holes are all in the same direction so every time I cut something on the miter saw something small it always kind of throws the piece that I want out and I have to find it somewhere so cutting partly through and then snapping off like that and that seems to be the best method So that little piece right there, it's not working for me. I can't seem to close it all the way down and lock it in place. So I'm gonna take it off, sand it over, and lower it to the other side of the, uh, the ring. So this one is in place so I can lock the hatch down in case of really foul weather and high winds. And you'll see in a moment here. And that about does it for this episode. Yurt me baby one more time ring of fire so don't forget to subscribe and share with everybody to help the channel grow also help me out i just lost my job and i can really use some extra cash so hit me up on my gmail for uh, any commissions i can make chairs tables uh, foam shields you name it so uh yeah hit me up on my gmail right here and uh i'll talk to you then and thank you for watching be humble be helpful and be honorable.